hi anyone. So let me first uh, thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak uh, in this seminar. Uh, so this is uh, the outline uh, of my of my talk. Uh, so I will first uh, well quickly recall uh, the Dirac uh, operator technique uh, to study metrics of positive scalar curvature on spin manifolds. Uh, then uh, I will discuss uh, the geometric motivation of this uh, work. So in particular, I will discuss some questions and uh, uh, conjectures that have been uh, recently proposed by, uh, by Gromov. Uh, then uh, I will state uh, the main uh, results uh, uh, that I summarize uh, that I called a long neck principle. Um, for Riemann and spin manifolds uh, with positive scalar curvature. So those are uh, basically uh, metric uh, inequalities um, with positive scalar curvature. Uh, then uh, I, I will uh, discuss uh, a little bit the um, techniques that, that I used to get uh, such inequalities. Uh, so I will discuss uh, the, well, generalized gromov lawson uh, operators, which are uh, a generalization of the uh, analytic work of Gromov Lawson from the classical paper uh, from 1983. Uh, and then I will uh, uh, give a explanation of the vanishing theorem. Anyway, so let's, uh, let's start. Uh, okay, so let me first uh, recall uh, that uh, given a Riemannian uh, manifold M, uh, the scalar curvature, uh, it is a smooth function uh, on the manifold M, uh, which is constructed out of the uh, Riemann uh, curvature tensor. Uh, and moreover, uh, it is the weakest uh, uh, curvature invariant that can be attached to a Riemannian manifold. So in particular, this is the uh, trace uh, of the Ricci uh, curvature. Um, and um, moreover, the existence uh, of metrics of positive scalar curvature um, on a manifold M uh, is related uh, to the topology of the manifold. So now I want to um, focus um, on, um, on spin manifolds and, uh, um, and explain uh, so the basic uh, principle that relates uh, the um, uh, topology of the manifold with existence of uh, metrics of positive scalar curvature. So in other words, now we assume that our uh, uh, Riemannian manifold is endowed uh, with a spin uh, structure. Uh, so here I uh, and uh, so remember that in this case, uh, there is a canonically associated uh, Dirac operator. Um, and uh, we also assume that A uh, is a sister algebra and uh, E uh, is a bundle of uh, who, whose fibers are finitely generated projected modules over the sister algebra A. Uh, and, and we assume that uh, we have a linear product and a metric uh, connection. Uh, uh, to, to this data, we associate the um, twisted uh, Dirac operator. Um, uh, which is obtained by uh, so maybe um, by twisting the usual uh, sp uh, spin Dirac uh, operator with the bundle E. So this is a um, first order uh, elliptic differential operator, uh, which acts on smooth sections of the bundle S tensor E, where S uh, is the spinner bundle. And uh, uh, now the operator uh, Z uh, is related to the scalar uh, curvature of G uh, through the classical uh, Lichnerowitz formula, which I wrote down here. Um, okay, the three terms on the right-hand side are, okay, the first term uh, is the connection Laplacian, which is a non-negative uh, operator of order two. The second term is one-fourth the scalar curvature of G. And the third term uh, is a um, uh, is an operator, is, is a bundle map, so it's an operator of order zero uh, 
um, on the bundle uh, S tensor E. And uh, moreover, uh, this operator uh, depends linearly uh, on the components of uh, the curvature um, uh, tensor uh, of the uh, connection on the, on the bundle E. So in other words, uh, the second and third term uh, encode um, uh, curvature information ca coming from uh, the Riemannian manifold and um, the bundle and the twisting bundle. All right. Um, okay, so now uh, um, uh, since uh, M uh, is a closed manifold and the operator Z is elliptic, then uh, the index of the operator Z uh, is well defined. Um, I mean, in general, this is going to be an element uh, in the K theory of the uh, uh, of the sister algebra A, and uh, it encodes uh, topological information. Uh, again, uh, when E is a vector bundle, uh, this topological information uh, by uh, is given by the classical uh, Atkinsinger index theorem, uh, and uh, is given by a cohomological formula. Um, and now I want to use the following fact that if z squared is uniformly positive, then the index is zero. Uh, and now from the Lichnarius formula, uh, we deduce that, uh, well, we use this uh, inequality. And, uh, and, and now this inequality uh, tells us that if the index of the operator z um, is non zero, uh, then uh, the scalar curvature cannot dominate four times uh, the R endomorphism. So in other words, the index of Z being non-zero dictates a balance uh, between the scalar curvature of G and the curvature of the connection on the bundle E. So remember that uh, this endomorphism depends uh, on the curvature of, um, of the connection on E. And uh, in particular, when uh, the bundle E is flat, then uh, the endomorphism R is zero, and therefore uh, the non-vanishing of the index of Z uh, is an obstruction to the existence of PSC metrics on M. Um, all right, uh, in this talk, uh, we want to consider, we will consider uh, two cases. So the first case is when E is a vector bundle, um, or equivalently A is equal to complex numbers. And then in this case, the uh, index is just an integer. And the second case uh, is when A is the uh, group sister algebra of the fundamental group gamma uh, of the manifold M. And then we take E to be uh, the Mishenko bundle over M. So this is a flat bundle uh, whose typical fiber is sister gamma uh, where um, uh, where now sister gamma is regarded as a uh, free module over, over itself. And uh, the index of Z uh, is an element in the K theory of sister gamma and is called the Rosenberg index. And then, and then in this case, uh, since the uh, Mishenko, Mishenko uh, bundle is flat, uh, then the Rosenberg index uh, is an obstruction to the existence of metrics of positive scalar curvature on the manifold M. And moreover, uh, the Rosenberg index is the most general known index obstruction to the existence of metrics of positive scalar curvature on closed uh, spin manifolds. Um, all right. Uh, okay, so, so far I uh, described the basic uh, relationship uh, uh, given by using index theory. Uh, between the topology of the manifold of a closed uh, manifold and uh, the existence of metrics of positive scalar curvature. Uh, but in this talk, uh, we want to um, focus on, on, on the case of manifolds with boundary. And now by the results of, uh, of Gromov, uh, every uh, manifold with boundary of dimension at least two carries a metric of uniformly positive sectional curvature and then a fortiori of positive uh, scalar curvature. And this means that if we want to use uh, topological information uh, to study metrics of positive scalar curvature, we need some extra 
uh, geometric conditions. Um, now, a, a classical example is given by requiring that uh, by studying metric on X, uh, which are endowed with a, a product structure near the boundary. And then in this case, uh, it is well known by uh, classical results of Atia, Patodi, and Singer that the Dirac operator with uh, global uh, boundary conditions is elliptic. And actually, here, I mean, there, there is a long uh, uh, history of, of, of uh, uh, I mean, this, this uh, uh, Atia Patodi Singer index theorem has been ex extensively uh, uh, used uh, to study um, metrics which have a product structure in the boundary. Uh, in this talk, I will not make any uh, assumption, so there is no assumption on the structure of the metric near the boundary, uh, but I will assume that the topological information is stored uh, away from the boundary. And more precisely, uh, I will present some metric inequalities following the point of view uh, recently uh, proposed by, uh, by Gromov. All right, uh, so now I want to uh, uh, discuss the uh, geometric uh, motivation. Uh, and um, and, more, and more, more precisely, I will, I will discuss some uh, questions and conjectures uh, recently uh, proposed by Gromov. Uh, on, on, of course, on, on manifolds, uh, on existence of metrics of um, positive scalar curvature on manifolds of boundary. So now we suppose that X uh, is a compact oriented and dimensional Riemannian manifold with boundary. And we suppose that F is a smooth uh, area decreasing map. So here, um, and then uh, the length uh, of the neck of XF is the distance between the support of the differential of F and the boundary of X. So here I drew a picture. Uh, so in this case, the uh, so this is the manifold X and the red region is the neck of the manifold. So notice that the neck is gonna be mapped through the map F to the base point of the sphere. And the blue region is the support of the differential of F. And notice that um, uh, if the distance between the support of the differential and the boundary of X is greater than zero, then the degree of the map F is well defined. Now, uh, the long neck problem uh, recently proposed by Gromov consists in the following question. So what kind of a, of a uh, lower bound on scale G and a lower bound on the length of the neck of X F would make degree of F equal to zero. Uh, more precisely, uh, Gromov conjectured that the, the existence of a positive constant Cn, uh, which depends only on the dimension n of the manifold X, such that if uh, the scalar curvature of G is greater or equal than n times n minus one, and the distance uh, between the support of the differential and the boundary of the manifold is greater or equal than Cn, then the degree of F is equal to zero. Uh, so notice that uh, so here, basically, uh, uh, we're comparing uh, the, um, the scalar curvature of the manifold X uh, with, the, with, the, with the scalar curvature of the uh, round sphere. I mean, this is just the scalar curvature of the round sphere. And uh, uh, so here, we're saying that uh, the length of the neck of XF is greater or equal than uh, this constant Cn. Uh, and then we want the degree of F uh, to, be equal to, to be equal to zero. So in other words, what we're saying is that if uh, those two conditions are satisfied, uh, then uh, we obtain a upper uh, bound for the length of the neck. So in other words, uh, the manifold uh, tends to uh, close up, uh, assuming of course that the map F is area decreasing. And uh, also notice that uh, if uh, we have a product metric near the boundary, so 
so like uh, in this picture, uh, then we can stretch uh, the neck as much as we want. And, and therefore, um, of course, in this case, um, we, we cannot, uh, uh, so, so, so this second, uh, so, 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 so the second condition is, is never going to be uh, satisfied. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Um, okay. So in other words, so, so anyway, so this is, this is the first uh, conjecture of Gromov. Uh, then uh, uh, let me uh, discuss a second uh, question that is again uh, related uh, to the length of the neck. Um, so we consider uh, the following geometric setting. Um, so we assume that uh, Y is a closed and dimensional manifold. And uh, we assume that X is, is, is the n dimensional manifold with boundary, which is obtained by uh, removing a small n dimensional ball from Y. So here is the picture. So in other words, uh, this is the ball. Uh, sorry, this is the ball that I remove, and uh, and then I, I, I obtain a manifold uh, whose boundary is going to be the n minus one sphere. Um, now suppose that we put a Riemannian metric x um, g on x, and then when r is a positive number which is small enough, uh, we let uh, b r be the geodesic uh, color neighborhood of the boundary of with r. And this is, uh, so BR is, okay, is this uh, red region here. Okay, so then in this case, uh, 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 Gromov conjecture that uh, Y uh, minus a point, uh, uh, that if, sorry, um, conjecture that if Y minus a point admits no complete metric, of positive scalar curvature and the scalar curvature of G is greater or equal than a certain positive constant sigma, uh, then there exists a constant C that of course is independent of the manifold such that R, in other words, the width of the color neighborhood of the boundary uh, must be smaller or equal than C over uh, the square root of sigma. Uh, so now I want to quickly uh, justify uh, this first uh, assumption. Uh, um, so if you take a, um, for example, a manifold um, of dimensional three, uh, which emits a metric of positive uh, scalar curvature, uh, and we embed a, a small N disk, uh, then by classical results of uh, gromov Lawson and Schoenayao, uh, we can always find a metric of positive scalar curvature on Y, uh, which has a product structure uh, near the boundary of this embedded disk. Uh, and, and therefore, we can always uh, uh, remove uh, a small ball and put a complete metric of actually uniformly positive scalar curvature. And therefore, in this case, uh, I, can, uh, I can never uh, find, I mean, in this case, the first uh, hypothesis is not satisfied. And on the other hand, I can never find a constant such that um, this condition is, is going to be satisfied. This inequality is going to be satisfied. Um, and uh, OK, so now I want to discuss a uh, third um, question that is, again, related to the length uh, of the neck uh, of a manifold with boundary. Uh, so in this case, we start uh, with a closed uh, manifold N and, and then a band over N is a manifold V, uh, which is diffeomorphic to N uh, times um, a uh, segment, uh, minus one, one, uh, let's say. Uh, and now we put a Riemannian metric uh, G um, on, 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 on the band V. And then uh, in this case, we say that uh, V is a, is a Riemannian band over N. And we define the width of V uh, by this formula. 
So this is the distance between uh, the two uh, boundary components. So, so in this picture, uh, so N, this is the uh, core of the, of the band and uh, uh, the width of V is the distance between uh, the two boundary components. And then in this case, uh, uh, Gromov proposed the following conjecture. Uh, so suppose that N uh, is a closed manifold of dimension at least five, which does not admit a metric of positive square curvature. And moreover, suppose that V is a Riemannian band over N, uh, whose square curvature is bounded from below <clears throat> by a positive constant sigma. Uh, then uh, the width of V is more or equal than two pi times the square root of n minus one over uh, sigma n. And actually, uh, Gromov proved uh, many, uh, in many cases, uh, this conjecture by uh, using uh, the minimal hypersurface technique. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, topic that will not uh, be uh, discussed in this talk. Um, but let me uh, again uh, make a remark that. Uh, about the first um, uh, hypothesis that if n uh, admits a metric uh, of positive scalar curvature, uh, then uh, there exists a, uh, a Riemannian band uh, over n with arbitrary large width. I mean, uh, to see this, uh, just take the uh, product metric over over n. So in other words, if n has positive scalar curvature, then uh, n times r, uh, I mean the product metric of n times r as uniform deposit square curvature and therefore um, there, there, there cannot be any uh, upper bound uh, to the width of a band over n. Um, all right, and also let me uh, remark that uh, this dimensional uh, restriction is due uh, to the fact that there exists a counterexample uh, in dimension four. Okay. All right. So those are uh, the three main uh, problems that I want to discuss today. And um, and now uh, I want to um, uh, make some general uh, observation that in in these cases uh, we we have that the topological information is localized in a region inside the manifold and uh, the geometric uh, information is formulated in terms of a uh, lower bound of the scalar curvature and of the distance uh, between the boundary of the manifold and a certain uh, topologically relevant uh, region. Um, and then uh, uh, it, it is uh, a, a natural uh, question to ask uh, uh, whether um, uh, these questions by uh, these questions can be at least partially uh, uh, addressed in the spin setting uh, using the Dirac uh, operator technique. And, uh, and, and, and actually, um, I mean, this is exactly what I will present in this talk. And um, so, 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 so in the situation that I will consider, uh, I will do, I will use uh, analysis of the spin Dirac operator on the incomplete Riemannian manifold, uh, which is obtained by a compact uh, manifold boundary, a Riemannian manifold boundary in which I uh, remove the boundary and the topological information is encoded by bundles, uh, which are uh, supported in the interior uh, of the manifold X. Okay, now uh, let me, um, Okay, so first of all, uh, all right. So now let me state uh, the main uh, the main results, and then I will uh, outline uh, the uh, analytic uh, machinery uh, used to 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 uh, obtain this result. Um, so for the first theorem, uh, we start. Uh, we 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 suppose that X uh, is a compact n-dimensional Riemannian uh, spin manifold uh, with boundary, and we let f uh, be a smooth uh, area uh, decreasing map uh, from the manifold X uh, to the round into the round sphere of the same dimension. Moreover, uh, we suppose that the scalar curvature 
uh, of G is greater or equal than a certain positive constant sigma uh, on uh, X minus uh, the support of the differential. So this is, so in other words, uh, on the uh, neck. So this is, this is just the neck of Xg. Uh, and uh, the second uh, hypothesis is that the scalar curvature is greater or equal than n times m minus one on the support of the differential, uh, which is the blue region in this picture. And, um, and moreover, we assume that the distance between the support of the differential and the boundary of x is greater than pi times the square root of m minus one uh, over n sigma. Uh, then uh, the conclusion is that the degree of f is equal to zero. Um, so notice that here actually uh, um, the sigma uh, uh, that that uh, appears in the third uh, hypothesis, uh, I mean, depends only on the lower bound of the scalar curvature on the neck. Um, so. Uh, in 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 um, in other words, uh, it, if um, uh, so, let me remark that in the case when uh, sigma uh, is equal to um, sigma is equal to um, uh, n times uh, n minus one, uh, then uh, uh, this constant becomes just pi. Uh, over n. All right. Uh, ah, which I wrote here already. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, so the remark is that if the, the scalar curvature is greater or equal than n times n minus one, and the, the degree of f is on zero, uh, then the distance uh, is going to be uh, smaller or equal than uh, pi over n, and and this actually. Uh, answers uh, the uh, this addresses the long neck problem uh, in the spin case. Um, let me also uh, remark that if uh, M uh, is a, a complete n-dimensional Riemannian spin manifold and F is a map which is locally constant at infinity and as degree non-zero, and moreover uh, the scalar curvature of G is greater or equal than N times M minus one on the support of the differential of F. Uh, then uh, we have by results of Gromov, Lawson and LaRoule uh, that the scalar curvature cannot be uniformly positive. And uh, recently uh, Zhang uh, improved uh, this result showing that actually the scalar curvature of G cannot be positive, okay. Uh, so, of course, uh, uh, this uh, result, of, uh, um, the first result is uh, implied uh, by uh, theorem A, uh, but uh, the second one is, uh, is not. And this requires a um, different argument. All right, so now let's go to the uh, second uh, um, inequality. Uh, so now I, I want to consider uh, the following uh, geometric setting. Uh, so I assume that Y is a closed n-dimensional spin manifold with fundamental group uh, gamma. And uh, uh, we assume that L is the Mishenko bundle over Y. So remember that this is a bundle with typical fiber sister gamma. Um, and uh, moreover, uh, uh, the, um, we denote by alpha y the Rosenberg index of y, uh, which is exactly the index of the Dirac operator twisted with the Mishenko bundle. Uh, now we consider a second bundle, which is uh, the trivial uh, bundle on y uh, with typical fiber uh, sister gamma. And now uh, we denote well with this symbol uh, the Dirac operator twisted with sister gamma. And now we want to consider 
uh, the class of closed spin manifolds uh, uh, satisfying the following condition. So we assume that the Rosenberg index uh, does not uh, coincide with the index of the Dirac operator uh, twisted with a trivial bundle uh, with fiber uh, sister gamma. So I called uh, this condition H different from L. I mean, this um, in, uh, the, the, the uh, intuition here is that there is a discrepancy uh, between the higher index and uh, the uh, lower index. Uh, let me uh, uh, quickly um, uh, uh, observe, uh, let me quickly uh, remark that uh, manifolds satisfying uh, this condition H different from L uh, form a, a rich class. Um, so a, a, a typical example is uh, consists in uh, closed enlargeable uh, spin manifolds. Uh, so I will not um, um, I will not discuss in detail uh, the notion of, of of enlargeability, which is due to uh, Gromov and Lawson, and I refer to their paper. But um, uh, there are many. Uh, interesting examples. Uh, one is the Entorus, and uh, uh, or for example, any uh, closed spin manifold which emits a metric of non-positive sectional curvature. And, and uh, moreover, if M1 and M2 are closed spin manifolds, and one of the two ones is enlargeable, then the connected sum is enlargeable as well. And uh, so, so in other words, here we we have. Uh, many uh, many examples um, coming from enlargeable uh, spin manifolds. Uh, observe that a closed simply connected spin manifold uh, does not satisfy uh, this condition because, of course, the higher and lower index uh, just coincide. Um, all right. And now, uh, in this situation, now uh, in the uh, in, in now we consider the same setting as. Uh, the conjecture uh, A by, uh, by Gromov. So in other words, we assume that Y uh, is a closed and dimensional manifold and, and uh, we remove a, uh, a small uh, n-dimensional ball and we put a metric, uh, we in this way, we obtain a manifold with boundary X and we put a remaining metric G on X and uh, for R small enough, BR is a geodesic um, color neighborhood uh, of the boundary of X, uh, of with R. <clears throat> uh, then uh, in this case, so this, the second uh, theorem states that in this, in this situation just described, uh, suppose that Y is spin and satisfies the condition H different uh, from L. Moreover, suppose that the scalar curvature is greater or equal than a positive constant sigma, then uh, the width of uh, a geodesic color neighborhood uh, can be at most uh, pi times the square root of m minus one uh, over n sigma. Um, moreover, uh, let me uh, state so that uh, uh, so, so 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 in other words, we have a upper bound uh, for the width of a geodesic color neighborhood of the boundary. Uh, moreover, uh, uh, in theorem C, uh, so it is proved that if Y is a closed spin manifold, again, satisfying this condition H different from L, uh, then Y minus a point admits no complete metric of positive scalar curvature. And now, uh, if you put together those two, theorem, those two uh, theorems, uh, uh, you uh, we, 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 we obtain uh, that uh, the uh, conjecture A holds for all closed spin manifolds um, uh, satisfying condition H uh, different from L. Okay, um, so now uh, let me uh, state the last uh, result. Um, so now in theorem D, uh, we assume that N is a closed N minus one dimensional uh, spin manifold uh, with fundamental group gamma. Uh, moreover, uh, suppose that the Rosenberg uh, index um, does not vanish. 
and now let v uh, be a uh, Riemannian band over n uh, whose scalar curvature is bounded from below by a positive constant sigma uh, then the width of the Riemannian band is at most 2 pi times the square root of n minus 1 over sigma n and then the remark is that this theorem implies uh, conjecture b uh, for all closed uh, spin manifolds with non-vanishing uh, Rosenberg index. Uh, so here, let me uh, make uh, one more observation so that uh, under the same uh, hypothesis of theorem D, uh, uh, Seidler uh, proved that uh, there exists a constant C such that uh, this kind of, uh, su such that, I mean, already proved that uh, there exists a upper bound uh, for the width of the uh, band V um, on, uh, with, for a constant C uh, that uh, in general, I mean, that was not optimal. Uh, Gromov proved that the constant 2 pi times square root of n minus 1 over sigma n is optimal. So in other words, the constant uh, 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 that uh, is, fine, is found in theorem D uh, is uh, sharp. So let me um yeah so 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 this is um, and notice that actually um in in all the three theorems we find uh i mean in the first two theorems we find the, the constant pi over the square root of n minus one over sigma n and in this last theorem we just find twice uh this constant and 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 uh, um uh, so uh, anyway, so the, the, the intuition is that in, in this case, the, the, the geometric information is, uh, is contained, is, is encoded uh, in any slice uh, of, the, uh, of the band and, 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 and therefore uh, each boundary component has a distance that is at most pi uh, times m minus one over sigma n from, uh, let's say the middle slice. So that, that's where these two uh, factor uh, uh, comes from. Okay, all right. So now uh, I, I want to uh, move to the uh, analytic, uh, to describing uh, the analytic uh, machinery uh, that, uh, that, that I use to uh, obtain these this inequalities. Uh, I will focus on the first uh, two theorems. Um, so on the long neck uh, problem and uh, on on the um, width of a of a color neighborhood, um, the case of a band is is uh, obtained actually with some variations of, of this technique. Okay, so let me uh, start uh, with the main uh, uh, I, uh, I, uh, uh, with the main trick, which is uh, a rescaling trick for the for the Dirac operator. So here. Uh, we take X uh, to be again a compact uh, Riemannian spin manifold boundary and now we uh, remove uh, the boundary of X and in this way uh, we uh, obtain uh, a open manifold X uh, naught. Um, now the metric G induces a incomplete uh, metric on X naught uh, which we denote uh, with the same symbol. Uh, moreover, uh, we suppose that W is a bundle of finitely generated projective Hilbert modules uh, with inner product. And we let uh, Z uh, be the Dirac operator uh, twisted uh, with the bundle W. And uh, uh, Z is a formally self adjoint elliptic operator uh, of uh, order one. And, and now we regard Z as an unbounded uh, operator on L2 uh, with initial domain uh, compatibly supported uh, section of the bundle uh, uh, with, with initial domain uh, smooth compatibly supported sections of the bundle S tensor W. Um, now the main problem here is that since uh, the metric uh, is not complete then the closure of the operator uh, is in general not uh, self-adjoint. Um, now in order uh, to solve this problem uh, we make uh, the following construction. So we let uh, delta uh, be the distance function uh, from the boundary of the manifold X. 
um, well, in a geodesic uh, uh, color neighborhood uh, of the boundary, uh, delta is a smooth function and the differential uh, is equal to one. I mean, in general, the, this is gonna be a one Lipschitz function and actually uh, this is gonna be true almost everywhere. But, uh, now uh, pick uh, a constant R prime in zero R and let gamma uh, be a smooth function, which, which is equal to the square root of T in a neighborhood of zero R prime, uh, which is constant in a neighborhood of R uh, infinity. So here I drew uh, the graph of the function gamma. And, uh, and, and then uh, we let uh, rho be the function defined on x naught uh, as the composition of gamma uh, with uh, delta. And again, uh, here, uh, here is the picture. So, 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 so in other words, the function rho is, is equal to the square root of the distance in a small uh, neighborhood of the, um, of the boundary, and then it's gonna be constant uh, in, uh, in this region, okay? Uh, and then uh, I, I, I want to consider uh, the rescaled operator uh, uh, Z rho, which is defined just as rho Z rho. Uh, notice that uh, Z rho is an elliptic uh, differential operator of order one. And uh, uh, again, we regard Z rho uh, as a unbounded operator uh, on L2 uh, with initial domain uh, the compactly supported smooth sections. And now the, the main uh, proposition here is that the closure of the operator Z, Z rho, uh, uh, of the operator Z rho has the wanted analytic properties. So in other words, uh, the closure is a uh, regular self-adjoint uh, unbounded operator. So uh, the, uh, the notion of regularity, uh, so this has to do uh, with the fact that uh, I'm working with um, operators which are linear over sister algebras and, uh, um, and, uh, but um, the, uh, I would say this is the crucial property that, so the fact that, uh, in other words, this operator is essentially self-adjoint. Okay. Um, so, and uh, the, Proof of, of uh, I mean, to, to see this, I mean, first of all, uh, so this follows from uh, the theory of manifolds which are complete for a differential operator. This is a theory due to uh, Higgs and Rho and then extended uh, uh, by Ebert uh, to uh, uh, operators linear over sister algebra. So, 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 so in other words, uh, this uh, regularity part is uh, treated in in uh, um, in a paper by 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 Ebert. Um, so I, I will not uh, uh, go uh, into too many details. But uh, uh, the main the main idea is that <clears throat> uh, we can consider uh, we can rescale, of course, uh, the Dirac operator with uh, I mean with a function. Uh, of the form for R to the alpha in general. Um, let's say that rho is equal to R to the alpha near uh, the boundary. And uh, um, so the main point is that it is not true that for every alpha, the operator rho Z rho is gonna be essentially self-adjoint. So, so this is uh, quite a, a crucial point then for, for computations. But so, so, so the idea is that uh, the condition is that alpha is greater or equal than, uh, than one half. And actually in this, uh, in this talk, I will take alpha to be exactly equal to, uh, to one half. Um, and, and the idea is that if alpha is greater or equal than one half, then uh, you, can, you can actually um, 
I mean, you can actually construct a sequence of compatibly supported smooth uh, functions such that the um, such that the commutator with uh, the operator uh, z row uh, goes to zero, and then you re repeat the classical proof that, for example, you find in gram of uh, that works for 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 complete for complete manifolds. I mean, to to prove uh, essential self adjustments. Okay. Uh, okay. So now uh, I, I want to. So so so. But this rescaling trick was uh, definitely one of the main ingredients. Now I want to uh, explain uh, how uh, first how, how I uh, encode uh, topological information. So um, here I assume that E and F are bundles of uh, finitely generated projective Hilbert A modules with inner product and metric connection over X naught. And now I'm, I'm going to make the following assumption. Uh, this assumption is exactly the same that is in the uh, work of Gram of Flosson. So I assume that the bundles have isomorphic typical fibers and are trivializable at infinity. So this means that there exists a finitely generated projective Hilbert A module nu and uh, a compact subset K uh, such that uh, the bundles E and F are, iso uh, are isomorphic to new and out with a trivial connection outside of the compact set K. And in this case, I say that K is an essential support of the pair EF. Now, in this setting, uh, we can define a relative index following Gromov of loss. So I assume that L is a smooth uh, compact set manifold with boundary whose interior contains an essential support of EF. So here, uh, here is, the, is, the, is the picture. Uh, so K, so the blue region is an essential support and L is a submanifold with boundary whose interior contains uh, K. Um, and then uh, I form the double uh, of L, uh, which is, uh, uh, which I drew in the picture here. So in other words, I glue L and L minus, well, L minus denotes the manifold L uh, with opposite orientation uh, spin structure. And then I define a bundle D uh, obtained by gluing the bundle E over L with F over L minus over uh, the boundary of L. And uh, I denote by uh, D, well, with this symbol, the Dirac operator twisted uh, with the bundle V. And then the relative index uh, of the pair EF is exactly uh, is defined as the index of the of the Dirac operator on the double twisted with this bundle uh, V. And then it is possible to show that this does not depend on the choices that that we made. But um, now, uh, all right. So, 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 in other words, this is the way uh, the topological information is going to be uh, encoded. Uh, now, I, I I want to explain how. Uh, the topological information is related uh, to the uh, metric uh, information, to the geometric information. Uh, so in other words, the question is how uh, to construct a Friedel operator on X naught uh, whose index coincide with the relative index that we just defined. Uh, now we fix a, a rescaling function rho and uh, we consider a rescaled Dirac operator uh, Q rho and uh, R rho. So those are obtained by twisting the Dirac operator with, respectively uh, with the bundles E and F. Uh, now the, 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 the main problem here uh, is that, uh, well, so the, uh, the, the, the good side uh, uh, is, is that, of course, the, these operators are gonna be uh, essentially self-adjoint by the, um, resca the result that I, um, as I explained uh, five minutes ago, uh, but uh, the Lichnerowitz formula for the operators Q rho and R rho is quite complicated. Uh, this is due to the fact that uh, we have to commute uh, Q with the rescaling function, uh, so the, the Dirac operator with the rescaling function rho. Now, in order to fix this problem, uh, uh, I, I will make use of a potential uh, in order to construct an operator which is uniformly positive, positive at infinity. And actually, operators which are uniformly positive at infinity, uh, then, uh, I mean, are, are well known uh, to be 
uh, Fredon. All right. Uh, so here is, is the way I, I um, perturb my operator. So I first of all, take S to be a C2 grading of the spinner bundle. Um, now uh, observe, uh, and then of course we have uh, induced the two gradings of S tensor E and S tensor F. And uh, moreover, the operators Q rho and R rho are gonna be odd with respect to its grading, which means exactly that they, they have this form, respectively Q rho and R rho, where uh, the operator Q rho plus uh, is uh, for uh, the formula joint of Q rho minus and vice versa. And, and, and the same is true for R rho plus and R rho minus. Uh, then in this situation, now I fix a compatible potential, uh, which is a, a smooth function phi um, going uh, from x naught uh, to zero infinity with the property that phi is equal to zero in a neighborhood of an essential support of EF and, and uh, in a neighborhood. And phi is constant and non zero in a neighborhood of infinity. So here again is the picture. And uh, the idea is that uh, this is so that phi is going to be constant and zero in a neighborhood of infinity, and it's going to be zero in a neighborhood of an essential support of EF. And now, by the Gromov Floson assumption, uh, so in other words, we know that the bundles E and F are going to be um, uh, uh, tri uh, trivializable um, outside. Of, 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 a, um, of, the, of the essential support K. And therefore, uh, by this assumption, by this assumption uh, uh, phi defines uh, bundle maps from S plus uh, tensor E to S plus tensor F, and so on and so forth. Um, and now uh, we define bundles W plus and W minus. So W plus is S plus tensor E, plus S minus tensor F, and W minus is S plus tensor F plus S minus tensor F. Um, and now I define the operator P plus, uh, just uh, as Q rho plus R rho minus, and then I use phi as maps from, from um, well, exactly as I, as I, as I uh, described here, okay? Um, and then in this way, I obtain an operator going from smooth sections of W plus to smooth sections of W minus. And then I denote by P minus as formal joint. And uh, I consider uh, the uh, graded bundle W, which is W plus plus W minus. And now uh, the generalized gram flows on operator associated to, to our data uh, is exactly uh, the operator Mm, well, is this operator. So in other words, uh, as, you, as you can see, this operator is by construction um, odd and essentially self-adjoint. Moreover, um, by the discussion that we made at the beginning, this is also uh, formally, uh, this is also essentially self-adjoint. So in other words, the closure is a self-adjoint operator. And uh, another theorem is that uh, the operator uh, is that the square of the operator uh, P is uniformly positive at infinity. And, uh, and this theorem actually implies that uh, uh, the operator is Fredholm and the index of P is well defined. And, and then the next theorem, and, and we interpret the index of the operator P as the analytic index and the relative index as the topological index. And then the next theorem states that uh, well, it's uh, exactly an index theorem, so stating that the uh, analytic index and the topological index coincide. And here, I uh, also want to point out that uh, when the manifold uh, is, is complete, uh, then, uh, well, first of all, that uh, it's possible to define this kind of generalized gram of operators uh, with different choices of the rescaling function rho. Uh, when m is complete, then you can pick a rho to be just equal to one. I mean, the operators are already essentially self-adjoint and then 
In this case, uh, this construction yields the uh, classical construction of uh, Gromov and Lawson um, from, from the paper of, uh, I mean, from 1983. Um, all right. Uh, so now uh, let me uh, go over. Uh, so how, how much time do I have? Well, uh, you need to unmute yourself. I, I think technically your time is up, but you can uh, probably continue for a, a few minutes. Simona? Did we did we lose Simona? Yeah. Um, Maybe we lost connection. Um I think I see still see signals from Sima, but Did we lose lose him? Oh. Yeah, I think he. Okay, maybe we wait a little while to for him to finish. Um, oh, I have to admit. Okay, he's coming back. Yes, sorry. The, 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 there has been a small uh, issue with the connection. I think. Oh, uh, that's okay. Um, All right. Okay, so I will finish in five minutes. Okay. So, okay, so so let me share a screen again. Ah, but now of course I cannot. Uh... Oh, hold on, you need to, can you allow, um, to see. share screen, there's a button which uh, says allow multiple people to share at the same time or something. Okay, where is the button? Uh, like share. the green button share screen there's a little arrow uh, next to it do you see it uh, i i see a share screen but when i but like share screen uh, but on the upper right corner of share screen there's another mm, very little arrow you don't see it no i see only basic and advanced uh, you I can see, also I, make Simone a co-host if you go to participant and click on oh, Simone, yeah, maybe, you can make him a co-host and that you can yeah, yeah. Okay, participant. So how do I make him a co-host? I think you click on him. Oh, okay. I click on him. Okay. Let me see. Um, okay. Oh. Make co okay, excellent. I think if I want to make co host, okay. Ah, all right. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Yes. All right. So then now I definitely can. Okay. So maybe let me. So to conclude. Uh, uh, all right. So let, let me uh, give you uh, one example of, of this construction. Uh, so which is the case where, where I have a manifold with boundary and I have a degree one 
map or the green on zero map f uh, into the into the brown sphere and uh, again the blue region is the support and the red region is the neck uh, the neck remember that is ne sent to the base point of the sphere and then in this case i start with a bundle uh, over the sphere with connection uh, with metric connection then i pull it back uh, to the manifold x uh, over the map f and then i get a bundle uh, e uh, with connect with metric connection which is going to be trivializable outside over the neck, so outside of the support of the differential of f. And, and this is going to be the first bundle. The second bundle is just going to be uh, the trivial bundle with trivial connection. And of course, those two bundles are going to be, uh, are, uh, are going are to satisfy the Gromov Lawson assumption. So in other words, uh, they are both trivializable outside of the support of the differential. The support of the differential is going to be the essential support of those two bundles. And, uh, and moreover, in this specific case, I can pick the bundle E0 with connection uh, in such a way that I also know uh, what is the R endomorphism of the pullback bundle. I mean, the R endomorphism of F is just zero because it's trivial. And moreover, I also know that if the degree of the map F is non zero, then the relative index is non zero. This is the result of uh, Gromov Lawson. Um, all right, another example, but I will not go over details, is in the case of uh, a closed manifold minus a ball, and then I'm going to use exactly uh, the idea is to trivialize the uh, mischenko fomenko bundle over uh, the, the small that I remove, which is contractible, and then this gives you, at the end of the day, a uh, I mean, in, in this way, you can construct a pair of, a pair of bundles. Um, I, I just want to uh, quickly uh, uh, state the uh, vanishing theorem. Uh, now, uh, in, the pre in, the, in the situation where uh, we have that EF uh, are a pair of bundles satisfying the gromov lawson assumption, then uh, we can construct um, Remember the relative index. The, uh, the we can define the relative index and the analytic index. Uh, and now the idea is that uh, suppose that nu is a smooth function on X naught, uh, su such that the support is contained in uh, in, in, in K, uh, and then uh, let's suppose that I, I have information about the uh, R endomorphism. So I want that R e. Uh, is greater equal than minus nu, and our f is greater equal than minus nu. So in other, in other words, minus nu uh, is a is a uh, low is pointwise a lower bound of the endomorphisms uh, induced by the connections on e and f. Moreover, suppose that uh, scale g over four is greater than nu, and that the distance uh, between uh, the essential support and the boundary is greater than pi times the screw of m minus one over n sigma, then uh, the relative index is going to be equal to zero. Uh, of course, actually, um, by the index theorem, what we actually prove is that uh, under these conditions, uh, the uh, generalized gromov lawson operator is going to be uniformly positive. And uh, and the, the idea uh, of the proof that, of course, I, I mean, I, I will not go into, into details, but the idea of the proof is the following one. So that, um, that we have, we have um, uh, three, we divide our manifold into three regions. And uh, uh, so the, the, there is a region R3 uh, that is where the support of the differential of rho is contained. Then there is a, a second region R2 uh, over here that, that, that contains uh, the support of, um, well, this is phi, by the way, that, that contain the support uh, of, the poten of the differential of the potential phi. And then there is the, the, the uh, region uh, R1 uh, that contains uh, an, an essential support of the bundles E and F. And then, in, 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 in other words, the support of nu 
uh, is contained in the interior of R1. So this is exactly the support of the phi is contained in the interior of R over two and the support of zero is contained in the interior of R3. So now the statement here uh, is, the, is, the, is the following one. So let me, uh, is that the condition that the scalar curvature is greater than nu uh, gives you control on the region R1. And so there is, the, the, the reason is that on R1, uh, phi and, uh, uh, is zero and rho is constant. Um, and now the condition that the distance between k and the boundary is greater than this specific constant uh, allows us to choose, uh, well, uh, lambda, uh, eta, and a potential phi um, in, su in, su in such a way that, can now I go back to the picture, in such a way that uh, basically the, the constant uh, here that is achieved by phi in the region R3 is gonna control uh, the negative term coming from commuting uh, the um, uh, rescaling function rho uh, with a Dirac operator. And, uh, and actually, uh, and the, the reason why the, you have exactly this constant that as uh, explained before is sharp. So the, the, this constant where it comes from, well, um, actually, this square root of sigma uh, on the denominator, uh, this is, let's say, quite classical and comes out in all these kind of um, estimates. Uh, but the interesting part is, uh, first of all, where uh, the uh, constant pi comes from. And this comes from the fact that uh, the best choice for the function phi is a function uh, of the, uh, that has this form. So it's gonna be a tangent. And then uh, the idea is that if you have enough room and uh, then you can make uh, the argument of the tangent uh, uh, equal to pi half, basically. And this is exactly where pi comes from. So if you have enough room, you're gonna hit actually, the argument is gonna, is gonna hit uh, pi half. And then the last term, which is this square root of n minus one over n, uh, this comes from the Friedrich inequality that I want to quickly uh, recall. So the Friedrich inequality is the following inequality. So if you take any uh, uh, Dirac operator uh, or um, twisted with a bundle E, uh, then uh, the inequality coming from uh, the um, Lichnerowitz formula can be slightly improved. And the, and, and the improvement is exactly given by this constant n over n minus one. So in other words, if you, uh, uh, um, uh, up to the, uh, yeah. So, so, so I think, I think this is, uh, I think this is it. And, and this, and this, um, Friedrich inequality, this was, uh, well, proved by, uh, Friedrich, of course, uh, for, for vector bundles and cross manifold, then it was extended to open manifolds uh, by Christian Baer. And what I did here was to extend the, the, the Friedrich, the, actually the result of Christian Baer to the case when, uh, 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 when E is a bundle whose fibers are finitely generated uh, projective modules over a sister algebra. So, so that, but this is, uh, yeah, so, so this is uh, it. And uh, okay, so this is uh, all I wanted to say. So uh, thank you uh, very much for your attention. Any question or comment? Well, uh, if there is no question or comment, let's sing thanks, Simon, again for a wonderful talk.